Take a look here. It's not this hit right here. Right about this spot is where he steps out of bounds. And right here is where he takes a shot out of bounds. Third down and three. Still only one of five on third downs. Hall's going to keep it. He started up the middle and tried to bounce it. Probably should have stayed in the middle the first time. Of course, it's easy for us to say way up here. Yeah, he's going to be just a little bit short. It's going to be fourth down at about a foot and a half, I think. Now it was third and four, he picked up three. <laughs> 10 carries, 28 yards. So all the running he's done, he's only averaging 2.8 yards a carry. Well, they don't count the yardage when you east run. East and west. <laughs> when you run east to west. Does not count. <laughs> if that counted, he'd have about 100 yards. Well, they're going to measure this one. And it sure doesn't look like it from where the... Oh from where the stick is on the other side. Yeah, you got it. I mean, talk about one chain link. I think you got a pretty good spot there, actually. I think you're right. I mean, that one's literally inches, maybe two. They're going to measure it again, move it back up on the top of the crown of the field. Huh. Make sure they get the right spot on the hash mark. Just under four and a half to play in the first half, and Mount Crest will go for it again on well, this fourth is, down. This is big. If you don't get this, that's bad news for Mountain Crest on your own 30. Eddie Hall calls timeout. For Mountain Crest, that's their last timeout. No more timeouts left here in this first half for the Mustangs. And 4.28 to go in the second quarter. In a tie ball game. Now we figured this one might be a little closer. You were right. Than some people thought. As much as I hate to admit it, you were right. Well, that's not what I was looking for. I'm just that's what you got. I'll your, take it. Your wife never tells you that, so I'm just going to tell you you That's right. true. That's true, but that's because there are two versions of right. <laughs> There's the real version and then the fantasy land version. <laughs> you decide which spouse lives in which land. <laughs> <laughs> I know which one lives in which land in my house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cheerleaders brave in the cold. Well, the winner of this game takes on the winner of the Tipview Woods Cross matchup coming up. Mountain Crest lost a tough on one to Woods Cross on this field. Yes, they did. Also in this bracket are East and Orem, Skyline and Skyview. That upper bracket, well, we'll talk about that. Later, it looks like Mountain Crest decided to play this one a little closer to the vest. And, oh, Hall gets oh. off a, Hall, Hall gets off one that gets a good bounce. That's about it. Wow. Because that was straight up, straight down, and then bounced about 10 yards. 46 yard line. Boy, number 20 over there for Westlake, lucky to not get a penalty. Now, you know, nobody touched that ball unless they blew it dead. This is what's interesting. Austin King's picking that up, and he's running it in. Nobody blew the play dead. And unless they blew the play dead, the officials are coming to the middle of the field. And they're saying, no, it's Westlake ball right here. Yeah, nice try. Nice try. Somebody blew a whistle somewhere. Well, most of the officials are going down to break it up when uh, number 20, Addison Bates, is trying to pick a fight with Lowe. <laughs> so. Oh, really, that ball rolled around, rolled around, and Mountain Crest, nobody ever touched it. Did Mountain Crest ever touch the ball? I didn't see. I was watching I the fight. I didn't see it. Mountain no. Crest down the ball. If they did, then that, you know, that's maybe what. What the officials are saying. And everybody was running over looking at the brouhaha that was going on. Whoa. Let's take
take a look here. Let's see if Mountain Crest downs the ball. Not oh. a very good punt. Yeah, okay, Mountain Crest down right there. Mountain Crest now downs the that down. ball. That's it's easy down. punt. Gero picking up, picking up about a yard. Three fifty now to play in the first half. Tied at seven in a defensive ball game. Sorensen stepping up across the middle. And this one almost, nearly picked up. Almost picked up by Pukatau. If that would have been a decent pass, Pututau could have picked it off, but it was a short, short arm pass from Sorensen. You can tell he really likes uh, running the ball a little better than he feels comfortable passing the ball. Because he had a, how many completions did he have today? Sorensen is one of seven yeah. now. Long third down. Third and nine, one for four on third downs. Sorensen keeps. Now they run a little screen. Gero sneaks out of the backfield. Doesn't quite get there, so it's going to be fourth and short, and a flag comes in, too. Let's Devin, see what the flag is first. It Devin's, may be a face mask. Devin Speth doing everything he can to, to keep Gero. Look at this. He's all by himself, a man on an island. He just holds him up long enough for, I think, Richardson, and was that uh, Pututau came in? They called him for, they called a personal foul because he led with his helmet, I believe, on that. You saw it. Yep. Personal foul, yep, he's leading with blow to the head. I don't know if he hit him in the head, but he hit him at the top of his head. So another 15-yard penalty on Mountain Crest. Sorensen keeps it. Picks up about four. Zero. Second down and four. They give it to Gero. Here's a flag coming in, thrown in the it's gonna be a hold. hold position and that's what it is and now another late flag after the play comes from the back judge. I think it was number uh, 66 Miguel Gonzalez, a 6'2", 260-pound lineman. He gets caught with the hold. Holding on Westlake. Personal foul on Westlake. Ooh. So some shenanigans going on. Back that thing up a little bit further. Yeah, so they'll walk off the hold from the spot foul, which is just about the light of scrimmage, and then uh, walk off the personal foul after that. That's a huge penalty. That's, a, that's 25 yards. There's the hold. And now they walk off the personal foul. That's 25 yards worth of penalties, like you said. I can do some math. penalties on Westlake. Two of them coming right there. 2.22 to play. The ball at midfield. It's second and 31. Well, the way these teams are going after each other, the referee is going to have a little chat at halftime. I'll bet they get a little flag happy. Not careful. Going down the sideline and they overthrow the intended receiver, Taylor Riding. Well, ever since the, the first series that, that Westlake really had, well, the second series technically, I guess, uh, they scored on. And ever since then, Mountain Crest has really done a great job on defense. They've had them in really long third down opportunities, which this is here, as you can see again in the middle of the block sign of the clock, brought to you by S.E. Eden Jewelers, where Utah gets engaged. Third down and 30. One of five on third downs mm -hmm. for Westlake. Sorensen. 
lofting it out there and he overthrows his man. That was Austin Morgan. He had the inside position on Putu Tau. A lot Not of talking. Complete. A lot of talking going on between these teams. Yeah, there is. That pass isn't even close, and he's looking for a pass interference, which was also not even close, and that's Austin Morgan, who sounds like a bank firm, but wide receiver in this case. Austin Morgan. Sorensen, the punter. Shakes it. Yeah, and he knew it as soon as he kicked it. So that's going to roll down inside the 20 to the 19 yard line, and that's where Pretty Mountain Crest will take over. That's where they needed to get to to get the first down. Pretty good bounce based on how that came off his foot. <laughs> well, that's how Hall's kick la last yeah. kick was. Now Mountain Crest with no timeouts left, 144 to play in the first half. And we're tied at seven in high run. low in the backfield with it. Throwing it downfield, looking for Pututau for the first time tonight, and he oh. can't haul it in. He had it in his hands, and when he hit the ground, he couldn't hang on. Well, he didn't really have a chance to bring that back in because it was thrown up and over the head of the defender. That was number 20, Addison Bates. He goes up and tries to bring that ball in, but can't do it uses his height to his advantage, but never gets it to his belly. Get to my belly. Yeah, and my, see right there, he tries to bring it in, but there's a defender right underneath him. Oof. That's a great grab. Yep. Just couldn't tuck it. That's the first time they've really looked toward Putu Town today. I think they saw something right there. 136 to go in the first half. Hall has some time. Steps up, now tucks and runs. No, he stepped back behind the line of scrimmage. Now Puchu Tau catches it, they're gonna call they're offensive gonna pass interference. Yeah. And that's a loss of down. So that'll be half the distance and third down. So it'll be about third and 20. Take a look. When Eddie Hall does get behind the line of scrimmage, make sure he stays there before he throws this ball. And you know, they're seeing something with Puchu Tau. He has a height advantage over every defensive back for Westlake. That was offensive pass interference, and that was obvious. Pretty easy call. <laughs> now, you don't want to get stupid here, and, and uh, there's still 123 to go. They have not burned much of the clock. Well, now you're down inside your own 10-yard line, and it's third down and long. Westlake still has two timeouts left. I'm just concerned about somebody trying to be a hero and Turnover. Well, we know that Mount Crest has the double pass in their arsenal. They usually run that play, though, when they're out near midfield, have a lot more field behind them. So Westlake takes a timeout. They want to talk about this one a little bit more. Third down and 20. Well, what do you think of what you've seen so far here? I think it's just the way Mark Wooten said it would be. Physical, tough game. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to see if Mountain Crest uh, can answer the physicality of Westlake. And I, I got a feeling both these teams are going to get an earful at halftime from their coaches. Yeah, you could be right. Mostly because of not because of the effort and trying to get out there and make a play. It's the turnovers and penalties against both these teams that have been, a lot of them are head penalties. We've seen a lot of personal fouls of late. It looks like, uh, you know, a first round playoff team, between a game between a couple of teams that are a little jittery. Oh, I flip it out there to low, low. Spun out of bounds and the clock stops. As he gets out to the 21 yard line, it's an 11 yard gain. Hall to low.
So 